I, um, I finished the second to last chapter, excluding the epilogue, and, um, I thought I was going to cry. <laughs> I, um, I, I mean, we learn in American history classes about the Civil War and about, um, you know, the, the pressure that Lincoln must have been under, but when you're considering Lincoln as a person rather than a political actor, um, and when you consider how uh, personable he was, like he was a uh, Joshua Wolfshank writes in the book um, explicitly, you know, how um, Lincoln was just a, always true to himself, for better or for worse. Um, the pressures of the Civil War, which, you know, secession happened after he was elected, but before he was inaugurated. And Buchanan did not help. And here's here's a guy who just wants everybody to be happy. And he's faced with the biggest conflict that the United States had experienced in it in what about seventy years? And he has like no experience in politics <laughs> really oh my goodness and then to know how deeply he felt everything and to have such terrible losses in this terrible conflict it's insane it's just insane and um, as we're reaching the end of this book uh, the main point that the author is making is that um, uh, this m melancholy <laughs> this melancholy um, that Lincoln feels um, is A blessing and a curse and um, I, and and so because he has known the depths of despair sorry not enough storage space so I had to deal with that and I've lost my train of thought <laughs> um, so this this grief that Lincoln has felt is what makes him capable of taking on this immense task of salvaging the union of the American states when they are so um, so opposed to this principle of freedom for black people because of the supposed um, economic essential um, essentialness <laughs> whatever I'm tired <laughs> of uh, of slavery at, you know as a as a thing that we did um, yeah it's just it's I I've never thought of Lincoln in this way and I'm really glad that I've been reading this book not just because it's helped me, but because I really respect uh, Lincoln as a president uh, and a person. And so um, I'm already on the waiting list for Lincoln and the Bardo, uh, which is the, the big book this year about Abraham Lincoln. But um, I'm definitely interested to know more about um, Abraham Lincoln, especially about um, 
just the who he was and um, how he has become a figure in in this um, you know in the American mythos uh, like what was it the Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter I kind of want to see that now and or read it was it a book I don't even know I'm not really good with horror <laughs> as you might tell by me almost crying at references, not even graphic references, to people dying in the Civil War. So, <laughs> um, uh, the book, I w was kind of expecting the book to go into a little more detail about um, the husband-wife relationship um, between, Abra between Abraham Lincoln and Mary Todd, but it doesn't. I don't expect it. There's one more chapter, so maybe. But um, the little hints that it's given make me want to read more about her and learn more about their relationship as well. So that's my cozy reading night update. I'm a little tired now. My ghost snoring. <laughs> the fire has died out. Um, but it's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for watching and I'll let you know um, maybe I'll do a review of uh, Lincoln's Melancholy when I finally finish there's only one more chapter in the epilogue to go but I need to stop there so bye